Last time we left off at 168, we had covered some of the translations of the first 29 chapters, so now this works into the 30th chapter. This one is the only one of the translations that is put into a, a format of verse. And so it starts off, listen, Sattva Vajra, I will show you your own nature. You are me, the source. I am and have always been pure in total consciousness. That might be enough right there. <laughs> but of course, the text actually goes on and includes a number of different things. So I just selected a few of the lines here to reference. Uh, these were ones I liked. You may like different ones or whatever. But in the second verse here, as it is loving kindness that realizes the true meaning, it does not strive to exercise great compassion. As it is the total state, it does not need to praise the deepest and most supreme qualities. And then the second line in the next verse, letting it be without acting, it self-liberates. So you don't do anything, it just does it by itself. The last line in the next verse, liberation arises from within oneself. It's not something that happens from outside. There is no source outside. And then the last line of the next one, true bliss arises from within oneself. And then the next verse, the three lines, the last three lines, from subtle understanding of the authentic condition, all the qualities and capacities immediately arise in oneself. Meditation is letting be without seeking. So we don't have to, in this form of meditation, there's nothing that we have to do. We just let it happen. On the next page, that first verse, last line in that verse, it abides in all equin... Equ I have trouble pronouncing the, this form of the word. Uh, equanimously, like infinite space. Pardon? Equanimously. Equanimously, okay. All right. <laughs> Equanimously, all right, like infinite space. So there's the equin... Equ Equino equanimous quality <laughs> to that uh, is very important. Equanimity is very important. A uh, couple verses down below that. Meditative stability of supreme quality does not involve the thought of meditative stability. So it's very easy to get trapped up in the idea of what it is that we're trying to do and label it. And once you've done that, then you have put yourself into a box that can be very difficult to get out of. Okay. The last verse of this uh, page, equality beyond the thought of Dharmakaya, which like the moon's reflection in water cannot be grasped. You can't grab the reflection. It's not a solid thing. On the next page, the bottom of the second verse, Thus, those who seek it are like a blind man trying to grasp the sky. An interesting metaphor to help explain that. And then about the middle of the page there, time past and time present abide in the total state of the authentic condition. And then down a couple more verses. There is no past or future Everything has existed since the beginning. In other words, everything is present now. And then in the next verse, the second line, all is just a name and a magical illusion. So we tend to put labels on them and we begin to reify them as different forms and begin to think about them as being really real, so to speak. And then on page 171, the third verse down, outer and inner are one thing. The outer itself is the inner. And skipping a line, existence is only a name and is caused by an erroneous view. It is, in this manner, one remains separate from the equality of contemplation. 
and then down three more verses down the king of equality has never spoken of male and female so we transcend that again those just become labels that begin to uh, create ideas about what it really is moving on to 172 a little below halfway down but not even Vajrasattva can name it, saying, here it is. So even the Buddhas are unable to name these things, because if you do, then that becomes the idea of what it is, and that's not what it really is. Skipping the next verse, this is the sole path for all that naturally abides in all things. And then going on to the next one, bliss lies in understanding. This itself is the pure dimension of the world. So there's this natural bliss of understanding, this inner peace. You just are satisfied, you're content with the way things are without having to think about it, or figure out why or what or where or any of those kinds of, of things that we learn in our journalism classes. <laughs> we avoid all of those things. On page 173, in the fourth verse down, being self-perfected, there is nothing to offer. In the previous verse, it was talking about Gana Puja. Uh, so uh, there's nothing to offer in the offerings, the tzoks and the other ritual things that we do. It's already self-perfected. Being pure from the beginning, it is already nectar. And then down, Three, three verses down below that, last one of those, remaining in equanimous contemplation without speaking is the supreme mantra. So we think of mantras as something we say, but in this case it transcends that, so we no longer have anything that we need to say about that. So a very interesting aspect of uh, the way this is articulated in a verse format.